Uh, hi, yeah, it's Jackie here in the LGFA, and we're uh, on another Zoom call, and I have three very special guests uh, this evening. Uh, the, uh, the focus very much on uh, club activity right around the country. Uh, delighted to be joined up on my top left-hand side of my screen by Jer McCarthy, uh, journalist uh, down in Cork, and our LGFA Journalist of the Year indeed. Uh, how are you, Jer? All good? Really good. Thanks for uh, thanks for having me. Not a problem. Stephen Harbin from Dublin is down on the bottom left hand side of my screen. Uh, Stephen, you're in charge of looking after the referees and all those important people in Dublin. Am I right in saying that? You are indeed. Yeah, busy job, but sure, look, someone has to do it. Absolutely. And Alan Gunn, well known uh, broadcaster. Um, up around the, the, the Monaghan neck of the woods. And indeed, further afield, Alan, uh, Real Ladies Football aficionado. How are you, Alan? All good, Jackie. Great good, to be on good. With you. Absolutely. Good to have you on, lads. Um, plenty to get through, so we get stuck right into it. Alan, looking uh, right around the province um, of Ulster, there's some cracking uh, games coming up at the weekend. I guess the one that will be uh, you'll be keeping a close eye on is Emmy Vale against Dunamine yet again. Um, Dunamine have won something like pff, some some mad uh, in a row in 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 Monaghan. Is there any chance they can be stopped in this one, um, Alan? They're going for eighteen in a row, Jackie. Yeah. It's absolutely phenomenal. They really are. They're a phenomenal side, and I see it every year. And this year is no different. I just I can't see them being beaten. To be honest, I think I was remembering back, there was actually one game that I went to watch down mine where I actually went thinking, this down mine side's not going to win today. And that was two years ago in an Ulster final against St. McCartans. And they didn't win it. And the reason I just didn't feel they were going to win it, it was because St. McCartans were celebrating 25 years. And I felt that they just were so up for it. And that year, down mine, to me, they just weren't firing on all cylinders. And I just felt that that was the only game that I felt that they weren't going, but they're fantastic. Like you just look at their squad and from the one that first county title in 2003, it's, it's nearly the same team still going, still going strong and they're absolutely fantastic. And how these players keep going, it's fantastic. The way they just keep coming back year in, year out. But I've interviewed them and they just say they're a family. They're like sisters mm. and they keep winning. And I suppose that's, the big thing too, when you're winning and success, you just want to keep going. Yeah, it's a lovely habit, isn't it, that they have? And they're up against Emmy Vale, and I watched um, these two playing in a sevens game in um, mm-hmm. before the All Ireland final day, before the All Ireland last year. And even in the sevens game, skin and hair was flying. You know, it was. Um, mm-hmm. There's no love lost between these two. No, most definitely not. And I've said it as well that you take Emmy Vale out of Monaghan and put them into any other county. I don't know. They might have won numerous county titles as well. They've just been very, very unlucky from winning that All Ireland Intermediate. I think it was 2008 the one that been promoted up to senior. But they were coming in against this phenomenal Dunwine side, which I rate in the top three along with the likes of Carnacon and Bally McCarvey. Mm. Those three teams to me are just absolutely fantastic sides, and I just feel for Emmy Vale that they just keep coming up against them. And I suppose Dunwine. Emmy Vale, as you say, there's that rivalry and Emmy Vale in the sevens have got the upper hand of them. But it's just when you go up into that 15 where Dunamine just seem to be, there's no weak links in this Dunamine side. As you say, you look at it and you just can't see a spot in the side where you could say we can target that place where we might get the better of them because they're so, so strong and backbone by the court and he's still there every one of them and then when you have the likes of Amanda Casey coming back again looking for more it's it's fantastic when you look at them and then of course they the still although they're very much backbone by a lot of experience they have took a couple of younger players in and I suppose the Garlands the Garland twins yeah. Yeah, they are fantastic footballers and they've just slotted in there and when you do have that younger players coming in maybe a year another player coming in each year it just keeps the other ones going and they say, right, we're going to win it for them this year. We're going to win it. They haven't won a county title. Well, they have now, but if a player comes in that hasn't won a county title, that drives the other girls on, even though they might have already had 15 in their back pocket. They want to win it for them. Mm, absolutely. No, it, it should be a cracker. Just a shame 
Alan, that we can't get a big crowd to watch it. It's one of those games that a lot of people would want to would want to go along and watch. Alan, we're going to come back to a few more games in Ulster happening over the weekend in a little while. Um, and Alan, just before I, I turn to, to Stephen, do, do you know, are there any plans to stream that Monaghan final on Sunday or what have you heard? Is there, is there any tentative plans at this point in time? Yep, the good news is the three Monaghan finals have been streamed this weekend, the junior. The, on Saturday you have the intermediate, which is in a skiing against my heart, Clown, throwing in at 2.30. That's been live streamed. Then you have the senior game, Emmy Bill on a mine at 5.30 live streamed. And then on Sunday you have the junior final between Cleveland and Sean McDermott's. Good that's news. been live streamed as well. So I have to give full credit to Monaghan ladies. Again, it's fantastic. And I know Dublin also doing their semi-finals and a lot of counties is doing it this year and it's absolutely fantastic for supporters to get to see the games. Brilliant. And that's a lovely segue over to Stephen. So Stephen, you can tell us all about that. Uh, we're recording on a Tuesday night, but we'll be putting this out tomorrow. So tonight, as we stand, um, the two Dublin semi-finals are, are taking place. Fox Cab, of course, are going for... Six in a row uh, in the county. They're also going for, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, this, they're also going for six in a row in Leinster. Um, so they're a phenomenal know, yeah. outfit. Um, so both Dublin semi finals will be live uh, on Wednesday night. So Fox Cab against Ballyboden and Kilmacud Croaks against Nafina. Two cracking games in store, Stephen. Absolutely, yeah. Like uh, we, I suppose I'll start with the with the Fox Cab and Bowden one. Like you said, Fox Cab are now going for six in a row in Dublin and in Leinster. So they've been um, they've been raring to go. I've been out and kind of watched them a couple of times this season, and they've taken over from where they've left off last year. Um, so they're they've hit the ground running, and I was out watching them um, Bowden v Croaks as well the other evening out in the championship group game. And uh, Bowden as well. Now, in the end, Croaks won fairly handily, but you could see there was an awful lot of kind of good things happening there with Bowden, and especially with uh, good old Valerie Mulcahy, who who came on after 15 minutes of the first half. And, oh, yes. Uh, uh, it was um, it was a different ball game when she came on, that's for certainly sure. So uh, I, the Fox Cab Bowden game, it's going to be one of those ones where it's either going to be a tight, intense game, kind of similar to the Fox Cab and Thomas Davis semi final last year in the championship, or it's going to just be a one horse show with, with, with Fox Rock. So it, I think it kind of depends on how Bowden come out on the day and, and how they approach it. But with, with Valerie Mulcahy, they have a chance. Um, that's certainly for sure. Yeah, she's, um, she's class. She's a class player. Jerry, you know all about Valerie and her capabilities. Um, Jerry, just uh, we, we'll break off briefly to, to Cork. And we've reached final stage. And it's going to be Moore Abbey against West Cork ladies again. Uh, Moore Abbey, of course, the reigning All-Ireland champions. Was it ever going to be any other way uh, with these two teams in, 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 the, in the big pond in Cork, Chair? Um, at the beginning of the year, you would have said no, that it was most likely going to be these two teams. Um, neither of them impressed in the early rounds. They took a while to get going, but the semi-finals this past weekend, Jackie, I think, kind of made headlines because Morn Abbey put up a, a score of 11-12 mm. in beating Aerog, and West Cork put up a score of 9-15 nine, uh, in beating Ahada. And for anyone outside of Cork, Aerog and Ahada are two very, very good teams with a lot of intercounty experience, a lot of underage intercounty experience. But it was a marker set down by the two teams that have contested the county final for the last, this will be the third year in a row that they've met. And in my opinion, I've watched a lot of them over the last two to three years. Morn Abbey remained the benchmark, not just in Cork, not just in Munster, but I think in the country, I think they are. And they still re they remain the best club team in the country by far. I mean, their record, they've won the last two All-Irelands and they've been runners-up in three of the last three of the previous five finals. So their consistency is there. Shane Ronan is still in charge of them. And they manoeuvred the early rounds of this year's championship without a lot of players that were injured. But just even the last day, Laura Fitzgerald is a player you don't hear an awful lot about outside of Cork, perhaps. She came back and scored 5-3 just to announce her, her comeback, uh, five goals and three points. You've got Darren O'Sullivan, um, you've got you know Kira O'Sullivan, you've got Ellie Jack, you've got a couple of players as well on top of all of those coming through now. They are a phenomenal team. They do not get the credit they deserve, the club, in my opinion, outside of Cork. They certainly get it inside of Cork. Um, their opponents, my own from my own neck of the woods in West Cork, are a divisional side made up of junior and intermediate players, but quite a lot of the Cork senior football panel are on that team. And they are the only team to really test more Abbey within the county bones for the last two to three years. Um, it's on uh, Saturday week. It's going to be, they met in the first round in the group stages and it was a draw above in Mornabi and it was a cracking game. Physical, um, 
tight. Uh, no, no quarter asked or given the two teams. They know each other pretty well now at this stage. Mm. And while there's a lot of respect from both sides of the pitch, there's no love lost either. And I don't mean to be smart when I say that, but neither of them hold back when they meet each other. It, I'm delighted to say, just like the two lads, it's great to hear the streaming up north and in Dublin is increasing and I'm delighted um, to hear as well it's not official now but not alone the uh, this year's senior final between West Cork and Morn Abbey but the intermediate final between Glanmire and Clannacilty and hopefully the two junior finals are all going to be streamed and there's been a big uptake in Cork on it Jackie this year um, and interest levels and certainly on the streams and it's great to hear that it's happening not just in Cork but up the country as well Yeah it's the way forward Stephen I think Live streaming and give, give, yeah, give, the like, pe- give the people what they want. Absolutely. Like, even just to, to date so far, we've had five of our 10 championship finals, and, and they've out of the five of them, f- four of them have been live streamed on, on Facebook. So, more to come on the other five as well. Like, as far as I know, there's plans to, to live stream our, our, our other finals and semi finals that are coming up next week as well. So, it's great to see, especially in the times that we're in at the moment. You know, that way it's people love to just get out and get down and watch a game. And when that's kind of taken away from you, you don't really realize how much you miss it until it's taken away from you. As they say, but it, it's great that it's there. Like even our, we had our intermediate final there on Saturday between Kula and Castleknock, and it was a cracking game, and yeah. Kula won by a point. But that was live streamed, and at one point there was up to four or five hundred people live watching it. But since then, there's been a couple of thousand people that have gone back and rewatched the final. So it, it's great. I think it's something that um, will probably be the future when it comes to an awful lot of club games as well, even post COVID. Absolutely. Stephen, tell us a little bit about what you do. You're a key cog in that Dublin wheel. Um, so what's your, what's your remit uh, at, at the current time? Absolutely, yeah. So uh, myself at the moment, I am the adult ladies fixtures coordinator and also the referees coordinator. So I'm doing both jobs for me since. So uh, looking after the fixtures, like in, in Dublin, we have, as I was alluding to there, we've got 10 championships, 10 shields. And in any normal year, we'd also have that followed up by 10 leagues and 10 cups. But this year, we've an amalgamated formation of a league cup. So we're we're busy enough, to say the least. We'd have over 80 adult teams and uh, any any weeknight we'd have 40 games on a Wednesday night so it's uh, a lot of kind of organizing getting referees obviously it kind of ties in hand in hand the fact that I do both because if I'm organizing fixtures and I'm putting the referees at the same time I can mix and match and, and kind of bring referees to different areas so it, it, it's handy it's a busy job it's something I enjoy and it's something I like doing but at the same time, we've got great people in the background there. We have uh, our CCC overall off- officer, Paul McLaughlin, who does great work in the background. Mm. Uh, there's a great executive under Joe Keane with Mary O'Connor, the county secretary, and Patricia Monaghan in, in our office. So there's great people in the background doing Trojan work there, and doing all that makes my job that little bit easier. But yeah, no, look, it's, it's, it's busy times, and I'm just glad that we can, we're in a position to get games out there and get games done at the moment and get people out playing. Is everyone happy with your uh, referee choices for the semi-finals? <laughs> I've, I've, I've heard no rumblings, which is a strange one. So we'll, uh, we'll we remain to be seen when I'm on the sideline for one of them tomorrow night. We'll see. But uh, no, look, it, the referees we have in Dublin, we've got a great kind of caliber, a great standard of referees, and especially within our up and around the top houses with our senior panels, we're blessed with some really good referees. So it um, should be two very tasty games for, for the referees to handle, that's for sure. So um, I'm looking forward to going out to, to catch them. I'm going to go over and watch the Fox Rock and Bowden game myself. Um, we're hopefully trying to catch Kim McCudd and Afina as well at some point because they're both fairly close to each other so you can run back and forth. But two very good games. And even going to the Kim McCudd Croaks and Afina game, that's going to be it's a tasty game. It's it, it's Nafina have been the dark horse this year. They, they've probably not have been expected to come through to this round in, the, in, the, in their last game in the group stages they played against Lantarf and it was one of those games where it was tit for tat point for point and the FINA won out in the end and I don't want to call anyone underdogs but they probably were the underdogs coming up against that Lantarf team so fairness in the FINA they've been motoring this year Hannah Tyrrell I believe had a fantastic game in the game against Lantarf and um, she's one who's if on form she's one of the best in our day so look it's going to be a great game in Croke so it'd be two great games to catch while being streamed on Facebook if if you guys are ready to watch them tomorrow night yeah absolutely it's just brilliant to have the, that opportunity to watch these games you know you, you talk about the two Dublin semi-finals and, and Monaghan at the weekend Alan and then on to we roll on to Cork the following week and I'm sure there's more across the country as well Alan back to your good self um, Monaghan's not the only show in town 
-hmm. at the weekend. Uh, I'm looking at St. McCartans versus Ergil Ciaran in Tyrone, Terman against Glen, F uh, Glen Finn in um, Donegal, and there's a Cavan final as well. Um, Alan, tell us a, a little bit about the uh, Cavan is lacking against Crosser Lock. Have I pronounced have I pronounced that oh. latter name correctly? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the club of the late Tom Dowd as well, um, who will uh, sadly missed from from LGFA circles, former uh, president back in the day as well. Um, Alan, when we think about the, the, you know, I'm thinking about the last four. We talked about all Ireland series. You, you know, you've Moran Abbey, Dunamoyne, Fox Cab, and then maybe take your pick, Carnacon, uh, or the Galway champions, uh, Kilcarran Clonbarren, just on the tip of my tongue there. Is there anybody that can come out of Ulster that can challenge Dunamine and try and, and, and get through? I know McCartan's um, uh, a yeah, few years back were, were, were there thereabouts. Um, is there anybody that, in the tournament as well, or former champions too, is there anybody that can come out of the pack and, and uh, look to oust Dunamine uh, in, in the province? You'd have to say, if anyone can, Terman can. Mm. Now, mm. saying that, they're in for a tough test on Sunday against Glenfin. If they come through that, you would say that they're probably the side. Because when they did come out, they went on and won all Ireland, which was a surprise to see them probably going on to win the all Ireland. But they did. And mm. as they say, with a team, any team with a player like Jeremy McLaughlin in the side is worth looking at and will take watching. So... But, as I say, they have to come out of Donegal first and Glen Finn will definitely be no pushover because they're backbone by so many county stars. And you look at Karen Guthrie at the weekend, scored 112 in their semi-final victory over Mobile. A cracking game of football, thankfully. That was live-streamed as well. And talking about live streaming, it's given us that opportunity where we don't see them maybe until provincial finals or all Ireland semi finals, but now we're getting the opportunity to see them in their own counties and seeing them week in, week out playing maybe a quarter final or a semi final. So that's where live stream comes in. Alan, it's long it's long overdue, isn't it? When you yeah, think about it. it. Is. It's it's fantastic to see. And as I say, I sat down and watched that game the other day against Glen Finn and Moville, a cracking game of football. I think it was one nineteen to two fifteen was the final score. That'd be right, twenty two twenty one. So it was a phenomenal game of football and as I say, Karen Guthrie hit one twelve, seven points come off Yvonne McMonagall. Now that um or Yvonne Boner now as she's known, but absolutely that may be their downfall, the scoring, which is only two players scoring the 119. But then saying that, when you look at Terman, you're going to be looking at Jerry McLaughlin and getting the main scores for them as well. So that's going to be a cracking game of football. I haven't heard if it's live streamed. I'm hoping it is at one o'clock on Sunday. And if we don't see it late there and then, because there's so many games on, we'll be fit to go back and watch it. But as you say, that's the one in Donegal. That's going to be a, a fancy Terman to come through it. Okay. But it'll be a tough one. And then, as you say, in Tyrone, St. McCartan's probably will be another side if you were looking at provincial champions to come through. Tyrone club football is very, very strong. And no matter who comes through that, them or Eric and Kieran, but you would have to fancy St. McCartan for, I think, and could be wrong, but they could be going for five in a row this year in Tyrone, which would be a big scalp for them. And this would be a big thing if they could do the five in a row. So they'd be out to do that there. But of course, Eric and Kieran would be looking to get the better of them. But you would fancy St. McCartan's to come through it. And as you say, then the Cavan final also this weekend, Crusher Law, the reigning champions up against Lacken. Now with Marion McGuinness involved with them, of course. That's right, yeah. And so that would have had them. They had a big win in the semi-final against last year's beaten finalist, Mullahorn, while Crusher Law had a... A narrow victory, two points against Lorgan in their semi-final. So both teams, phenomenal footballers on both sides. And it'll be an interesting one. You'll feel that lacking maybe with the likes of Marion McGuinness now involved with them will be a key and they'll be back to get on the winning road again. So that'll be an interesting one. And it could be one that Lacken could actually pip the reign in champions, but it'll be an interesting one. Um, Alan, do you know off the top of your head, and you might know the answer to this, when is Armagh happening? Are they the weekend after? Or did this, what, what's I've seen this the weekend after. Okay. Um, I think it, I'm almost certain it's the, 30, the 12th, 13th that weekend. Okay. It's definitely not this weekend coming, it's the following weekend. Okay, so that's the weekend, Ger, of the Cork, um, 
the Cork final. What else is happening on Lee side, Ger, in terms of the other grades that you can you can tell us about? Because um, it's not so long ago that Cork had clubs in All Ireland Junior, Intermediate, and Senior finals, and you mentioned Ahad and they've risen through the ranks as well to become a an established senior team. So the the progression is very it's it's quite easy to chart the progression of of clubs in Cork when they win junior and intermediate titles they're well able to step up the grades. Yeah, I mean you make a good point. Twenty seventeen it was Ada, twenty eighteen it was Glenmoyer and twenty nineteen mm. it was Dunamore. Rena Buckley's mm. Dunamore last year. And this weekend is actually the intermediate final between Glenmoyer, who are the twenty eighteen All Ireland junior champions and they're taking on my own hometown Clonakilty on Saturday night and Clonakilty have been knocking on the door. Uh, Martine O'Brien, the Cork Inter County goalkeeper, would be somebody that you'd probably have heard of and seen before. She's in goal for Clonakilty. That that promises to be a cracking game. Again, they met in the group stages at the start and Clanmire won, but this is going to be much tighter. Um, I guess the I think just even from the conversation from the lads there, Jackie, as you're saying it, you're talking about streaming and talking about interest. There's clearly a demand and a market for this because yeah. Cork wouldn't be streaming junior finals. The, I've only mentioned the intermediate final. There's a junior A final between Douglas, which is a big area of Cork City, yeah. Valley Rovers, which is on the outskirts of the city as well this weekend. And there's a junior B final coming up as well the following weekend, which is, looks like it's going to be streamed as well. And what I've noticed is that when clubs through social media, clubs are getting much, much better in Cork anyway at getting the information out there and getting the message out there. And ladies football, social media channels like yourself deserve credit for that as well because you're retweeting and you're putting out that information as soon as you get it. And it's definitely having an effect in Cork because the Glanmire and Clan game, just for example, I think there was a couple of hundred live people watching it the night it was on and that's just the first round of the championship in a group match now this weekend would be interesting to see how many people tune in and what would be very interesting is to see how many people tune in the following weekend mm. for the senior final between Mon Abbey and West Cork because they've dominated the grade for the last couple of years but it's always a cracking occasion and last year and the year before they filled the grounds where the finals were on so I don't think obviously in the COVID and what we're living in at the moment there's not going to be any supporters there and it does take away it does as the lads will tell you and you know yourself from a, a championship game between two of the top teams, no matter what province or no matter what county, the crowd and the atmosphere makes it. But if you can't have that, to have the quality, I mean, clubs are doing their own thing, but that the quality of streaming that I've been watching, not just in Cork, but up other counties as well, has been very impressive. And if you give it to the people, they'll keep coming back. And I think it's been a very, very, I think the LGFA were in a really sticky situation this year like Camogie no fans we didn't even know up until the start of the year was there even going to be a championship and here we are now finishing off championships in each of the counties all over the country from the way the lads are talking about there and each one of them is being streamed and it's not just the diehards that will watch it Jackie it's the kids that don't normally get to see the teams even just listening to the, you're listing off teams in Dublin and teams in Monaghan and I've heard of the names but I've never had a chance to actually see them and if there's a live stream going, I'll tune in. And it, but it's the younger kids in the areas in those counties that are starting to tune in and see the inter-county players playing for their clubs. And I think that's been a huge thing. Maybe it's a discussion for another podcast. But he, clubs having their inter-county players around them for the duration of the club championship has been a massive bonus, definitely in Cork, and I'd imagine around the country as well. Well, Church, just on the on the overall point of the streaming, I mean, I would have seen it as a no-brainer for us to start showing league matches in in the national league and selected championship matches as well. Because I'm a big believer in 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 the more that you have and the more exposure that you have, the the greater your your audience is going to grow. And we had a situation last year where Ashley Maloney scored a goal against Cork down in Park Irin, and it ended up as a as an activation on the big screen at Crow Park in September. So the more stuff that you have, and you know, kids are looking at this, they're looking at Ashley Maloney's, they're looking at you know, the Searsha Noonan's a rising star down in uh, down in Cork and the, the pick of the Dublin players and Nicole Owens and Sinead Ahrens, all of these players are becoming household names, even up in Monaghan, you mentioned the Mac and Espies and the Courtney's. Um, yeah. and the, uh, our players are now becoming household names and I think that's very, very important. You can nearly, you know, list off starting 15s from county teams now. They're, they're becoming that prominent. I think it's really, really important. Um the audience is there, Jerry. I definitely believe that that's the case. And I mean, the the only the terrible thing about it is that you know you mentioned no fans at the games. I think the highlights, one of the highlights for me last year was going up to um, uh, Dugan Park in Ballinasloe. Uh, Dunamore played uh, Mikhail Rovers from Mayo in the All Ireland Junior Final Club Final. It went to extra time. Dugan Park in Ballinasloe is a, is a nice venue, right? It's compact, it's tight. It was heaving. 
it was the atmosphere was phenomenal and we had a huge um viewership as well watching it on facebook live and even though it was available on facebook live there was still a massive crowd at the game uh there was a big crowd at the intermediate club final as well alan there was a big crowd at the senior club final down the gaelic grounds um and I suppose that's just a frustration that people just can't go and watch the games at the moment. So, but this is, you know, it's here. You, you can watch them. Um, Stephen, did, just from a player's point of view, and you're right across the Dublin scene there, uh, what are players thinking about playing in front of, of, of not, not many people? Because Dublin club games would get, would get big, big, big attendances and, and big crowds. Um, does it dilute motivation in any way or is it, or do, do you notice that the, the, the levels are still right up there where they should be with these players? 100%. Like, look, I think at the end of the day, the players will want to have the crowd there and they'll want to have their friends and families there watching the games. But just as an example, for last Friday and Saturday, we had our Junior A and our Intermediate Finals and the Junior A Final between uh, Ballantyre St. John's and St. Jude's. Ballantyre St. John's won well and it, it, it was just a cracking game. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And, and even down to the Intermediate Final then on Saturday, it was a one-point win for, for Kula. And it was one of, probably one of the best games I'd seen mo most of the year. Like, I know we're only in a short year at the moment, but it was one of those end-to-end -end games where Kula had gone quite far ahead and, and then they came back then. And it, it was just one of those games where it was just like, imagine what it would have been like. You would have heard yeah. the roar from the crowd. You would have seen people on the sideline. And that would have been huge. But I'm looking at the players going, they still gave it their all. They still were 100% committed. And there was a couple of people scaling the wall, sitting on the wall. I don't know if, you, if you're on the Dublin saw, maybe Facebook saw, yeah. page. <laughs> yeah, there yeah. was a bit of a crowd on the wall having a little look over. And, and look, that's, it, it's hard as well for people who want to be there and want to support their, their friends, family, loved ones and that type of thing. But from, as I said, from what I've seen so far it, and from what I've been hearing from the players is that they're just happy to be back out playing football. They're, they're, oh. It's what they do. It's what they live and breed. It's it's what they train for three, four, five nights a week on some occasions. And it, it's just, I think they're all just delighted that the fact that they have that football there. And, and it's great to see. And, and it's great that we've been, we've been fairly lucky in Dublin and the fact that we haven't had any kind of issues around COVID where we've had games being pulled and things like that. They've, they've run fairly smoothly. We've been, we've been lucky. I know a couple of other counties have had a couple of clubs where they've had to pull down. Obviously it has happened in Dublin and a couple of the juvenile and things like that, but it's, it's just great to see that they've gone off. As I said, we've got 10 championships, 10 shields. We've had five championships, five shields already played and we've got the other five coming up now within the next two weeks and soon enough we'll have our championships all done and we'll, we'll have our league cup commencing and, and things like that and, and it's even the same in our juveniles obviously this year in, in the juvenile form format we've had um, our under 14s obviously fail it is a huge year for under 14s and it's that's something that they've done their 14s and that have been kind of robbed of as well but We've adapted in Dublin and done a fail type competition throughout a league format and still calling the fail just to give the girls that kind of opportunity to have the fail a piece. But overall, as I said, I think people are just glad to be out playing football. They're, they're glad to be out with their friends and been able to socialise and not having to stay in their houses where they were for two, three months a year. So I, I think it's great. And as I said, the girls are all in for it so yeah, no, it's brilliant. And, and just to even reiterate, like Jer was saying and going back to talking about the 20 by 20 by 20 campaign i think that's brilliant all the stuff that's been done there and it, it just goes to show to jay's point that if we put these videos out there and we put these live streams out there these girls will see it and it just the headline for the 20 by 20 campaign saying can't see can't be mm. it just really sums it up for me yeah i know well said and alan like when you think about um Emmy Vale and Donny Moyne, like I mean, there's people from outside Monaghan would travel to watch that game, and and you know you, you talk about Jeremy McLaughlin playing for Terman. If anybody hasn't seen Jeremy McLaughlin play, well, you're missing out. I mean, she's worth the admission fee alone. Um, so it, it's just you know it's a pity we can't have have spectators there, but um, I guess when when Emmy Vale and Donny Moyne play, and you've already alluded to it, uh, they won't be uh, they won't be standing on ceremony. Let's put it that way. No, if the supporters there are not, they'll not care. They'll just be <laughs> fighting 15 against 15. And as you say, when you look at if people that don't know the Monaghan football and the likes of Emmy Vale and Donamine, like you talked about household names, the Mac and SB twins and the sisters, four of them on it. And then, of course, the Courtney's, like there's so many household names and to see them all on the one pitch 
going head to head for each other because they might be county teammates, but let me tell you, when Emmy Vale pull on the white and black and Dunham Wine pull on that red and white, county friendship goes out the window when them two come head to head. So I'm looking forward to it on Saturday evening. It should be a good game, but I just feel because of this Dunham Wine and the experience, and I suppose Emmy Vale. Although they're still backbone by, of course, by the Mike and and Trey Scott back there and the likes of Nicola Fahey, they have a lot of younger players coming through. But I'm interested to see these younger players, the likes of Holly McQuaid's and the Lana O'Donoghue's. Like they're still coming through a lot of young players, but there's so much experience not done on my side. You just feel that they're just going to probably make it 18 in a row. And you can't take it away from them. People are saying, oh, a county wins so many county titles in a row. Obviously, the opposition's not there. But let me tell you, in Monaghan, the opposition was there. The mm. Oaks and the Monaghan Harps, the Maharaj Loons throughout the years, and the Emmy Vales. Dunamine had to fight for those titles. They weren't handed to them. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Where did they keep getting the, the resolve to keep coming back from? I think Bally Mack of 38 down in, in a row down in, in Waterford as well. And... I, is it maybe Alan a kind of a fear thing is driving them in some strange way as well that you know we don't want to be the team that 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 will be remembered as having that great run broken you know we we we're just going to keep going and, and try and win 18 19 20 if we can well I suppose the thing is as well Jackie it doesn't happen all the time and it's not going to happen the next group that comes along maybe will not see a county title for maybe 18 years so when Dunham are at the top, they want to remain there because we all know when you're at the top, you're going to be knocked off eventually, knocked off that perch. And they are up there. And as I say, they're up there. They want to stay up there as long as they can. Although this side seems to be, they've been around forever. They're not going to be around forever. They will come a new squad along. And you can see it already. Other clubs working so hard at underage. You can see Mara Clune coming back again. They've worked hard at underage. They're back in an intermediate final now on Saturday as well. So, against Dennis Gein and if they can beat their neighbours they're back up to senior the, a lot of clubs is working hard to get up there to Dunamine's level it is a massive step up but the day will come and as I've said it before you talked about Dunamine how do they keep going and I've said it that where younger players have come into the squad that haven't had a county title that the Lexus Sean Courtney and them despite having the 17 already in a row they want to win that one title for that girl coming into the squad so that drives them up yeah, the culture is incredible there. Lads, you've hit on so many br- brilliant points throughout, throughout, right throughout the conversation. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of, of I, I think it is going to become the norm post-COVID, Stephen, where we, we have streams. It's just, I suppose, it, 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 they've maybe been foisted upon people um, because of, of the pandemic that, you know, people just want to watch the games and this is their only outlet to watch the games. But at the same time, I keep coming back to the point that it's so unfortunate that people can't go... Uh, I remember a, f- a few years ago, Alan, when um, Karen Con came up to St. McCartan's, what an occasion that was. I travelled all the way up for that myself. It was, it was amazing. You know, you're Fiona McHale's and Cora Staunton's up in, up in McCartan's in Tyrone. And what, what, a, what a day it was for that club up there. Um, but, Ger, I'm going to finish um, with your good self because I came to you, to you last, so it's only fair. Um, Looking ahead, you're convinced that, that Moran Abbey are still the, the team to beat, not only in Cork, but, uh, but also nationally. You're already three in a row for favourites. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen nothing to, this year, even though they had a slow start to suggest to me that, and it's not just the last day, the semi final uh, demolition of a, of a very good Air Oak team. Uh, just listening to Shane Ronay and the manager and interviewing them, just watching them. Um, you know, watching them live, that back six are some of the toughest players I've seen playing ladies football. And it's that forward line, as I said, Jackie. And the difference this year with Mornabi is they're only getting into their stride now. But oh. it's the younger players, like said Ellie Jack, somebody you mightn't have heard yeah. about. She's starting to crop up now and knock over goals and points. And where they were missing players there after coming back in, it was just very interesting listening to the two lads talking about the domination in various counties there. Mornabi are ahead of everybody in Cork, including West Cork, who they're playing. Not by much ahead of West Cork, but everybody else is still playing catch up. But I think and I hope that the gap in Cork is starting to, is, even though the semi final scorelines would suggest otherwise, it is starting to kind of, uh, the gap isn't as wide as it was a few years ago. And hopefully in the next couple of years, somebody will step up and might take Moravi's crown. But right now, right now, anyone with Darren O'Sullivan and anyone with uh, Laura Fitzgerald, Ellie Jack, Reed O'Sullivan, Maria, I mean, Maria Callahan, Maria Callahan, like, 
from one to 50, from one to twenty, not one to fifteen, they are the strongest they've seen in Cork, and they remain the strongest. Now West Cork might catch them, and West Cork certainly don't fear them. They respect them, so it's going to be an absolutely cracking final. And just like yourselves, I'm going to be tuning into some of your finals, uh, which will be streamed. I'd recommend to anybody that doesn't know anything about Cork Ladies football. They probably know about the intercounty scene, but on the club side of it, I'd recommend that you watch that final because uh, some of the best players in the county will be going. And much like our, our, uh, our northern friend there was mentioning, there will be no stepping back. There will be no, a lot of know each other from the Cork setup. Won't matter a jot when the whistle goes. And we're in for an absolutely cracking Cork final county final if the last three years were anything to go by but I have seen nothing to suggest to me that if there was a Munster and, a, and an All-Ireland coming afterwards right now Moran Abbey remained a benchmark uh, not just in Cork but outside of it as well Yeah it was Laura Fitz scored that, that winning point as well last year wasn't it um, in the final was it Laura Fitz? Yes. Yeah, no, so. bit, yeah but like yeah. she was missing the first few games and she walked back in and scored five goals and three points Unreal. against a very good so they're, they're pushing each other they're, they want it they, they're relentless and it's going to be a cracking final, um, much like around the country. I think we're entering a couple of really important and positive weeks for ladies football. Good stuff. Joe, we might come back to you on this one next week because it is obviously um, uh, Saturday week, as you say, for the Cork final. Um, but, Jared, thanks for coming on tonight. Jared McCarthy, renowned journalist from Cork. Stephen um, is in Dublin as well. Stephen Harbour, uh, heavily involved with the county board there. And Alan Gunn. Um, Alan, enjoyed the weekend's activities. Um, regards to Louise as well, well known for her scribblings on ladies football. Um, as well. Lads, great to talk to you. Stay safe and stay well and we'll see you on the other side. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks, Thanks guys. Cheers, guys.